Hi everyone, welcome to today's class. In today's class, we'll be learning about non-thermal processing. So what is non-thermal processing? Nothing but a process which does not involve heat. So let's get into detail. So they say that non-thermal processing is an alternative or complementary process to traditional methods. Okay, uh, It serves as uh, an alternative method to traditional method. So why the products made by non-thermal processing are of high quality is that uh, traditionally, you know, most preserved foods are thermally processed. Okay, that is they will be subjected to high temperature like 60 to 100 degrees Celsius lasting for some few seconds to minutes. So what happens? Some transfer of energy happens. This energy, you know, it triggers some unwanted reactions in food. So this leads to what certain undesirable changes. For example, so when milk is processed thermally, it might have a cooked flavor. So it also accompanies what? A loss of certain vital nutrients and flavors. So, so when you process a food thermally, there are very, uh, very like quality, there are mainly very quality very big quality problems but when you process a food um, by using non-thermal techniques you know the quality of the product is really high and one more uh, important factor is that the energy okay consumed for this non-thermal processing is really less so you can inactivate microorganisms at a very ambient temperature, okay, very low temperature, uh, which does not cause any unwanted spoilage of food. Any unwanted spoilage, yeah, unwanted spoilage or undesirable changes of food, like uh, it will not deteriorate the flavor, the color, or the nutrient content. Okay, so that's all with the introduction of the non-thermal processing. Now. There are different types of non-thermal processing. The first one is high pressure processing. Second one is oscillating magnetic field processing. And third one is pulsed electric field processing. Fourth one is ohmic eating processing. And the fifth one is osmotic dehydration. Just learn the uh, like acronyms of all these. It's H P P. And this one is P E F. Like uh, we might get confused in our exams. Like when they give the acronyms, we won't be knowing what is it. But we would be would have learned about it in detail. So just learn the acronyms of it. And uh, I'm sorry for osmotic de dehydration. It is O D. Here it is. I think O M F. Okay. just have a look of it look at it now let's learn about high pressure processing as the name suggests okay as the name suggests it uses what elevated pressure say 6000 atmosphere which is equivalent to 87000 pounds per square inch so here this high pressure processing can be subjected either with heat or without the addition of heat so why they why why they do this that is that to inactivate the main purpose okay of any kind of processing is that to achieve microbial inactivation what is that microbial inactivation so they say that the pressures always inactivate uh, vegetative bacteria okay what type like uh, like how high the pressure is to be to inactivate the vegetative bacteria is that they should be uh, about 60,000 pounds per square inch. So when you have such a high pressure, okay, the bacteria can be inactivated. So they also say what they say is that so when you use such a pressure, uh, the food quality and freshness is also retained. In case of what pathogenic and spoilage bacteria, the pressure should be, okay, in order to kill them, the pressure should be around uh, 1 to 8 kilo bar, okay, or it is also equivalent to 100 to 800 uh, megapascal, okay. 
now this high pressure processing is also applied to pasteurization and minimal processing now uh, so microbial spores okay can i actually said right so they can be uh, they can okay they can be killed either by the application okay uh, of heat or without the application of heat so this uh, high pressure processing is also known as high hydrostatic pressure processing okay or ultra high pressure processing now so uh, they say that okay a same shape okay the same uh, shape of the product is maintained even at what extreme pressures because pressure is applied uniformly to all the uh, all the parts of the product now this hpp is more suitable for what high acid content food for a low acid content food this is not applicable to make them shelf okay stable okay heat is also it should also be applied along with high pressure processing two main factors in high pressure processing is that the food must not contain water why the food must not contain water is that uh, uh, i'm sorry like the food must contain water why the food must contain water is that uh, very dry solids okay uh, dry solids they won't okay they won't make the hp uh, hpp effective for microbial destruction so a sufficient moisture should be contained in the food the next thing is that there should not be internal air pockets if there are internal air pockets um, especially in the case of strawberries or marshmallows they say that the product may be crushed under high pressure treatments so this hpp is more suitable for what ready to eat okay ready to cook meats right so this is a, a this is a schematic diagram of the high pressure processing where the product is loaded and it is then okay sent to a vessel pre filling and here high pressure will be applied so when you okay high when you apply high pressure like there would be a hydraulic fluid okay it will be mainly water so high pressure first it will be applied to the water and then the water okay then the pressure from the water will be transmitted to the food this usually lasts for what 3 to 5 minutes now, the next thing it's oscillating magnetic field processing here a strong static or oscillating field of about 5 to 50 tesla is applied uh, for what 10 milliseconds okay they say that um this um this um okay the frequency okay the frequency of this oscillating magnetic field processing should be around okay uh 500 megahertz why why 500 megahertz is that above this frequency okay the product okay will uh will just begin to warm up okay the it would be turning into a thermal processing so we should maintain the frequency up to 500 megahertz so when you okay subject the food to such a processing uh, we can inactivate vegetative microorganism they also say that there is no influence of organoleptic property that is because uh, the temperature here will raise only up to 2 to 5 degrees celsius so this will never cause any uh, adverse effect on the organoleptic property okay. so uh, they say the preservation of food like with oscillating magnetic field involves sealing of foods in a plastic bag they usually seal it in a plastic bag and they subject it to one to hundred pulses okay in uh, in can at temperatures of what zero degree celsius to 50 degree celsius and the total exposure of time uh, will always range from what 25 to 100 minutes now pulse electric seal processing so pulse electric field processing is nothing but uh, it will have a short burst of electricity like for microbial 
inactivation. This pulse electric field processing is always suitable for what? Liquid and semi-liquid products. Only liquid and semi-liquid products. Here, uh, the volt, okay, will always range from, okay, high, it has a high voltage pulse, like in the order of what? 20 to 80 kilowatt. Now, what are the foods restricted, okay, for such a processing is that the foods with no air bubbles and foods uh, like which foods which have low electrical conductivity are restricted for what? Pulsed electric field processing. Now, so this is a pulsed electric field uh, processing. So a raw material will be subjected and it would be, okay, uh, it would enter a treatment chamber and then you would get the treat treated product. Okay, like uh, what they do is that in the treatment chamber, a series of short and high voltage pulses will break the cell membrane of vegetative microorganisms in liquid media by expanding existing pores. So this process is called as what? Electroporation. Or they also create new ones. So this pore formation, okay, is either reversible or it is reversible. So this depends on the factor like electric field intensity, pulse duration, and number of pulses. Okay, so the membranes of uh, of uh, PEF, like pulse um, pulse electric field, okay, uh, treated cells, you know, they become permeable to small molecules. So this permeation causes swelling and eventual rupture of the cell membrane. So they say that in general, uh, the shelf life of the PEF treated and thermally pasteurized food is comparable. Okay, it can be compared. Now, what are the factors? Okay, like that affect the microbial inactivation with pulse electric field. One is the process. Here the process, you know, uh, it is nothing but electric field intensity, pulse width, treatment time and temperature and also the pul pulse wave shapes. The second thing is that microbial entity. Microbial entity means the type, the concentration and the growth stage of microorganism. And the last one is treatment medium. Here it involves the pH antimicrobials, ionic compounds, conductivity, and medium ionic strength. Now, okay. now homing uh, heating processing. Here, the food material itself will act as an electrical resistor. Electrical resistor. So, this is heated by what? Passing electricity. Here, the electrical energy you know, is dissipated into heat. This results in what rapid and uniform heating. This home heating is also called as what electrical resistive heating or joule heating or electro heating. Here, alternating electric current okay, uh, is passed. Okay, that is, it will develop what internal energy generation in food. So here the heating pattern is inside out. Whereas when you okay when you compare uh, the like conventional okay heating, what happens is that there won't be alternating electric current. Whereas there will be what a conduction and conventional heat transfer. So this causes okay this would be really okay this would be really there will be uh, okay this would cause a very great quality damage. This leads to a quality damage so that's why in home heating factor there okay there are alternating currents which pertains to what good quality food okay even in home heating factor uniform heating is uh, done so this is a schematic diagram here so this home heating uh, process you know it is more mostly suitable for what proteinaceous food and this cleaning process is also very simple and uh, so this will not uh, provide or cause any kind of smell on the product. Okay. The last one is osmotic dehydration. So here there's one small principle that is that the water diffuses from hypertonic solution to hypertonic solution. Hypertonic solution is nothing but dilute solution. 
hypertonic solution is nothing but concentrated solution. This will always happen to a semi to a semi-permeable membrane till equilibrium is established. This osmotic dehydration is most suitable for what fruit fruit and vegetable industry and also what fish and seafood industry. Okay. One of the advantages of osmotic dehydration is that okay, there's a good quality improvement and uh, energy efficient as compared to what other dehydration techniques like uh, the air vacuum uh, tray drying because they those conduct at low and because okay because they say that OD can be conducted at a low or ambient temperature so the packaging cost or the distribution cost can be reduced okay enzymatic browning is also reduced in OD and uh, Next thing is that the product stability. Uh, there's a there's a there's a great product stability during storage because the uh, because the water activity level is really low. Now, the last thing is flavor retention. The flavor retention is done when sugar or syrup is used as what is used as an osmotic agent. Yeah. That's all for today's class. And uh, what did we learn here is that we learned about the non-thermal processing. We've got some five types like uh, like HPP, oscillating magnetic field processing, pulse electric field processing, uh, ohmic heating processing, and osmotic dehydration. So yeah, just learn and uh, thank you for watching. Do subscribe, like and share.